Good afternoon. With everyone calling for a change in policing, no one is giving any specifics. We expect police to stop crime before it happens, which is almost impossible, which means they're going to be stopping people who look suspicious, which often is people of color. How about a different approach? How about when a crime is committed that we utilize all of our resources and solve that crime? It's called crime scene investigation. For the past five years, we have been running a school called the CSI Academy of Florida where we teach law enforcement officers crime scene investigation such that they can approach a crime scene with confidence, gather the forensic evidence that proves a case through scientific evidence. Fingerprints, DNA, scuff marks, uh, alternate light, blood, all of these things bear silent witness against the criminal. That's the change we need. We need to start that now. This show is dedicated to the crime scene investigator, knocks on one more door, misses one more hot meal, looks at the scene photographs one more time, makes one more phone call, makes one last try, and solves one more case. My name is Robert Rush. Welcome to the CSI Academy, dedicated to finding the truth. My name is Robert Rush. We're going to show you how we train real crime scene investigators. And let's start with the real thing. Yep. Okay. Hey. Good morning again. Welcome to the CSI Academy. I want to congratulate each one of you on being selected for the first CSI Live class. Each one of you have unique backgrounds and diverse experiences. You're going to utilize that as you go forward and learn how to be real crime scene investigators. Stop! Stop! Okay, now you know why we call it CSI Live. Okay, now what I all want you to do is write down the description of the shooter you just saw. Best you can. And I want the viewers out there to do the same thing. Get out your pad and pen and write down that description. Derek and Kim are going to come in here and we're going to explain the results. All right, so we know that was probably a little shocking to you as you're sitting there. So you know I was eyewitness testimony is not always reliable, right? Because things happen, people see things differently. That's why we had you guys write this down. As soon as it happened, we wanted to see what you saw. Um, so I'm just going to read a couple of them. Uh, and I'm not going to tell you who wrote it, so that way you know, I won't embarrass anybody. So we have gray shirt, hoodie, blue pants, gray gun, sunglasses, maybe hat, about 5'8", kind of short guy. Uh, brown jacket, blue jeans, hat, white male, 40s, 50s, about 160 to 180. Um, sweatshirt, gray hat, revolver, 357, nickel plated, six inch barrel, wood handle, 5'10", 220, jeans, sunglasses, and right handed. So we're going to bring him in and, and then see what actual uh, he looks like and what he's wearing. So if you come over and stand by me, we're going to go through some of uh, your answers as to that, sir. This is ground truth. Okay, so 5'8", <laughs> kind of short guy. I'm 5'8". 5'10"-ish. 5'5", yeah, 5'10"-ish. So basically we have an average of 5'10"-ish and a 5'8", 5'11". He is 6'5". Six, 6 feet 5 inches. Six, five. We have uh, between 150 pounds to 220. I'm he's, 215. He's 260. So if he even, even if he just took off the hoodie, maybe kept the ball cap on, you see how they're probably even totally going to bypass him. The only way we would be able to find out who that was would be able to locate the gun, print it, DNA, and hopefully that we get his prints off of it or his DNA off of the gun. And then we can say, this is the guy that did it. 
Now, let's meet our CSI students. Hi, my name is Zori Bennett. I am 22 year old or Jamaican American from Miami, Florida. Hi, my name is Kiri Sadis and I'm a 47 year old from Lansing, Michigan. Hi, my name is Dustin Moore. I am 49 years old. I'm from Lenore City, Tennessee, and I've been a resident of Gainesville for 25 years. Hi, I'm Trinity. Um, I'm an 18 year old college student. I recently attended Santa Fe College in Gainesville, Florida, which I also happens to be where I was born and raised. Hi, my name is Joey Todd, 40 years old. I'm from High Springs, Florida. Hi, my name is uh, Huntley Johnson. I'm 30 years old. I'm from Mekinope, Florida, but I've lived in Gainesville uh, my, most of my life. Through these doors, our students will be entering the world of crime scene investigation, embarking on an educational experience like none other being tested mentally and physically. Hi, I'm Kimberly Long, Program Manager and Lean Instructor at the CSI Academy of Florida. The CSI Academy of Florida is a 28,000 square foot facility. We have multiple dedicated rooms that can be staged for different types of crimes. Students are taught by experienced current or recently retired investigators. Our classes range between eight to 40 hours and most of our classes are approved for the International Association for Identification for Certification. Our students receive up-to-date information and instruction on crime scene investigations, evidence collection, courtroom testimony, and specialized forensics processing. Our students receive training on biological evidence collection, blood dynamics, identifying bloodstain patterns and the mechanisms that created these patterns, and limitations that are within bloodstain pattern analysis. We are standing in one of our unstaged crime scene rooms. The rooms will be staged according to each discipline that's highlighted in the classroom. They are designated to replicate different types of crime scenes investigators are going to encounter. We're now going to go to our body and evidence room to stage a crime scene. This is our body and evidence room. This is where we keep our weapons, drugs, electronics, and any other type of physical evidence that we're going to need for a crime scene. Along the wall, we have our gender nonspecific bodies that can be assigned to gender, clothing, and injuries according to the crime scene. Oh, jeez. Yeah, this Schmidt. Oh, yeah? Sexual assault? Where at? Okay, I'm on my way. Hey, good morning. Good morning. You there you go. There you go. There you go. When did it. you get here? Mm. I've been here at least an hour and a half. Gee whiz. What took you so long? I live an hour away. Okay. Oh. So. So basically, what we have, patrol got a, uh, a call of a sexual battery. When they uh, responded, there was a white mm -hmm. female here. Mm -hmm. She said she was getting in her car to go to work this morning, probably about five five thirty ish, somewhere around there. Okay. And um, she guy came up behind her, put something in her back. She's not sure what it was. Anyway, he pushed her into the car. So he pushed her from the driver's side into the into the passenger side. Okay. He gets into the driver's side. He drives her to this location. He then gets out of the car, 
goes to the passenger side, basically pulls her out, drags her into the woods, and that's where it happened. I have not gone into the woods. Okay. They haven't gone into the woods. So, so far, all we've done is I got them started documenting the scene, photography, our overalls. Okay. Now they're and collecting measurements and a sketch. And um, and now she's almost finished documenting okay. the overalls of the vehicle. They're almost completed as far as the measurements. Okay. And then we'll be able to start concentrating on processing the car. All right, guys. So the information that we have on, on this case is uh, we have our suspect that uh, forced his way into the driver's side of the car. So we're going to need to process this area here and the door handles uh, for DNA evidence, as well as the passenger side, because we have information that he, he drug our victim out the passenger side. So the same area on the passenger side. So Dustin, why don't you take the driver's side? Carrie, why don't you take the passenger side? DNA swab first of the handle, then process with the powder. Oh shit! I think I messed up the print! Huh. Good thing I took a picture before you messed up the print. Hey. Alright. What you got? Well, we, uh, we just got done processing uh, the vehicle inside and out. Uh, the team did a great job. Uh, we got our DNA uh, samples from all pertinent areas. Fingerprint wise, not finding a whole lot in fingerprint. We had one good fingerprint on the rear view mirror. Uh, I heard we messed that up. Yeah, our guy, it, it didn't lift as well. It happened sometimes. Okay. It got smudged, but luckily, uh, Zori got a good picture of it. Okay. Uh, scaled it, so we're good to go on that. I'll have a chance to look at it. Um, but as far as uh, was you know, it fingerprints, it, it, it appeared like, like it was wiped down. We, didn't, we weren't even finding uh, victim prints on it. Okay. So it looks like we're going to have to think out the box so, on this. We may not have any DNA either. Uh, it's, it's a yeah, good chance. It. If it was wiped down, yeah, okay. good chance. Okay. Right, let, me, let me go talk to you. Thanks. All right. I'm so sorry. Just a couple other questions, okay? Okay. All right. Is there anything else you can remember? Anything you said? Anything you did? Anything that you haven't gone over yet? Um. Well, the only thing I can think of is that. When he dragged me out, um, I was so scared I wouldn't know how to get back that what I did is I just counted my steps to the spot and it, it was 23 steps. Okay, that's that's very helpful. Okay. That's, that's very helpful. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Can somebody come over here? All right, thank you. Run this cord into the woods, okay? Okay, that's good. All right, one rake, it opens up. Flip it up, yeah, there you go. Second one. All right, I want you to follow me out in the woods. I want you both to be patting down the ground area. I'm gonna be following you with this vacuum cleaner, okay? Into the woods.
Good afternoon. My name is Kaysen Bartz. I work as a mosquito expert for the city of Gainesville, Florida. Florida is home to 80 different species of mosquitoes. Aedes aegypti, commonly referred to as the yellow fever mosquito, and Aedes albopictus, commonly called the Asian tiger mosquito, are the most common mosquitoes in Florida. When a female mosquito lays an egg, it then grows into a larval stage and then into a pupal stage, all of which cannot be out of water to survive. When the adult hatches out, it can take as long as four minutes to emerge from its shell. Only the female mosquito bites you, and then she must quickly find a blood meal to nourish her developing eggs. The female mosquito is attracted to carbon dioxide, which human beings exhale in every breath. When a mosquito lands on you, it begins to pierce your skin using their serrated proboscis, piercing rather than biting your skin. Then, she injects a painkiller from her saliva, making the piercing less noticeable, and then a blood thinner to keep the blood flowing, preventing the blood from clotting. After feeding on the blood, the female mosquito needs to find a resting spot while her body digests that blood. This can take up to three days. She looks for a dark, shady, protected area to stay warm and humid. If you are outside in Florida, mosquitoes will bite you. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for coming out quickly. No problem. Got a big bag of stuff to go through, okay? All right. Okay. I'm vacuuming from the woods. Got a big vacuum cleaner. Uh, we stirred it up as much as we could, trying to see if we'd have any luck catching a mosquito. Um, and so, 80s out to pick this, 80s aegypti's, got a little bag here sorted through. See if you can't find me one that just had a, a blood meal. All right, let's see what we got. Uh, I'll make my day, okay? Got a lot of midges mostly. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go, this looks about right. We definitely have some 80s albopictus. And yeah, we have a blood fed albo right here. Yep. Now we need a we need a little evidence bag, something we can put this in so we can ship to the lab for DNA. Okay, we got we got what we need. Yeah, DNA section please. John, John, hey, good to hear from you. Hey, uh, I got a favor to ask. Uh, sorry to bother you on the weekend here, but uh, we've got a high profile case uh, down here. Uh, we have sexual assault, but uh, we're thinking it, it might even develop into a serial rapist. But uh, what we've got here is uh, we've collected uh, mosquitoes from, from the crime scene, the exact area. Yeah, yeah, no, no, hear me out. Uh, the mosquitoes, we had a, a insect specialist come in and he was able to uh, we've got a, a blood draw from uh, one of these mosquitoes and we're trying to link to the area um, there's been articles and we've researched um, that we can uh, in, in extract or possibility of getting human DNA yeah no serious uh, what we really need you to do and if you could expedite it is uh, we have the sample drawn and uh, we want to send it to you to see if we can get a profile and run this thing through CODIS. So if, if you can help us out, uh, it'd be awesome. Yeah? Awesome. Thank you very much. Let's see here. CODIS report. You gotta be kidding me. That's awesome. Hold my calls. That's awesome. We got it. Hey, we got an Otis, uh, CODIS hit. What do you got? CODIS hit. Oh, our... tell me. The mosquito came through. Mosquito came through. Awesome. That's incredible. What's our next move? Man, let's, let's see if we can get a photo lineup put together. Let's okay? do it. We'll that's, make a that's call. Unbelievable. All right. Good job. Good job. Yep. Hey, Miss Page. I'm so glad that you came in for us today. Listen, I know this is going to be a little difficult, mm -hmm. but we have a photo array we want you to look at. Now, we're going to have somebody that's what we call an independent or a blind administrator, somebody that's not involved in the investigation at all, that's going to present 
the photo, uh, the photo array to you. He also has some instructions that he has to read. After he's finished, if you feel like you see the person in there, there's a pen. All we need you to do is put your name, the date, the time, and the percentage of how sure or accurate you are. He may or may not be in the photo array. Oh, okay. okay. Do you have any more questions for me before I walk out? Uh, no. Okay. No. Okay. okay. Thank you. I have him come in. The perpetrator might or might not be in the lineup. The lineup administrator does not know the suspect's identity except that this instruction need to be given when a specified and approved alternative method of neutral administration is used. You should not feel compelled to make any unidentification. It is important to exclude innocent persons as it is to identify the perpetrator and the investigation will continue with or without your identification. Do you understand that? Yes. Mm -hmm. The show is dedicated to crime scene investigator, knocks on one more door, misses one more hot meal, looks at the scene photographs one more time, makes one more phone call, makes one last try, and solves one more case. My name is Robert Rush. Thank you.